Hi, thanks for being with us. The Columbus City School District and its employees are under investigation to determine if student records have been falsified to improve their school state report cards. The Columbus Dispatch claims the city, Columbus City Schools officials wiped 2.8 million student absent days off the district's computers during the past five and a half years. These startling accusations led to an investigation by State Auditor Dave Yost in what is called the School Data Scrubbing Scandal. In the wake of the State Auditor's investigation, the superintendent, Dr. Gene Harris, retired. Columbus Mayor Michael Coleman has stepped in with the Columbus Education Commission, raising flags about a possible mayoral takeover of Columbus City Schools. As a matter of fact, the Ohio AFO-CIO ran advertisements warning of a pending corporate takeover, claiming that Michael Coleman's Columbus Education Commission is working toward the dismantling of the Columbus Board of Education, replacing it with appointed members not directly accountable to the voters. Joining us to sort this out are two candidates for the Columbus School Board, current uh, school board member Hanifa Kambon and candidate Michael Cole. Welcome to Kahari Free Thank at last. You Thank so you for having much. us. Thank you so much. Thank you so The scandal. Hanifa, what in the world took place? I mean, is the dispatch reporting correct? Is it incorrect? Are they on cue or off cue with this? That's an excellent question, Kahari. Part of that is correct. There were some absences that were, I'll use the term scrub, but 2.8 million? Well, when you say 2.8 million, be careful. I it didn't say mean, it. The Columbus well, Dispatch said. Well, when the Dispatch said. says 2.8 million, it doesn't mean students. In other words, you have a school of 600. Mm -hmm. 23 of those students were truant. Of those 23, maybe each of them averaged 92 days. Mm -hmm. So we don't mean students when you talk about the absence. And also, let me add No, they this. said 2.8 million absent days. Days, So okay. that means that... So it doesn't mean, but sometimes people have misinterpreted that as to mean students, oh. okay? Or, or some people, and we don't have that many students, no, right? No. But when people see numbers, okay, they may not be as analytical as you or I. But when people see numbers, they say, oh my gosh, then that means if there are 50,000 students then, if you want to divide that, then those are the kinds of absences that now, how does this rank with what's not. happening with Atlanta? I mean, Atlanta, the school superintendent was indicted. Uh, a host of other things have happened, uh, uh, kind of corruption. People have been arrested. Are we at that level? No, I don't think that we are. And let, let's be clear, okay, the Atlanta was about grades and about test scores, okay? Let's be clear that Columbus was about absence versus truancy. Those are two different different entities. However, let's be also perfectly clear that the investigation has shown that there were some errors made, that there were some individuals that may have an error, okay, committed those well, offenses. Dr. Harris said she of... knew nothing about it. Uh, Carol Perkins, the school board president, is also claiming something very similar. Who knew something? If neither one of them knew, then who's accountable for this? Uh, well, I think that the superintendent is accountable, and I think the Board did of she Education know? is accountable. The superintendent says she did not know. Do you believe her? I have to go by what she says, Kahari. She says that she did not know. Now, what she did know, she did know the people that she put in charge of overseeing the regulations and the ordinance of ODE. She knew that, and those are the people that were questioned, not only doing uh, the uh, FBI investigation or the internal, I'm sorry, the state auditor investigation, but also doing the district investigation. Michael, Michael Cole, wh why are you coming on the school board in light of all this, man? <laughs> I mean, this is the biggest, <laughs> if it's true, the biggest scandal in the history of the school board. Why do you want to be a school board member? You know, chances make champions. Mm -hmm. I believe that, you know... Where'd you get that from? <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, I, I saw it on a show called Locked Up. Mm -hmm. Oh! And I saw a brother who was on death row who said that. Chances mm -hmm. make champions. Chances make champions. Mm -hmm. I believe that this is an opportunity right now to change the course of our district for the better and for our children's, for all of our children's sake. That's why I want to do We've it. got a, a problem. Now, somehow, somebody's going to come and ask me to support a school levy. Should I support a school levy in, in light of all of this stuff, or do I wait until this thing plays itself out before I jump aboard and support a school levy? To me, to um, you, I still have not made a decision as to whether I want to support any ballot initiative at this point in time. I think there's too much that still has yet to be made a decision on. Exactly how much is this mill is going to be in full? 
what's going to be the skin in the game of the charter school system, what's going to be the return on investment on the part of residents who have their children in Columbus City Schools, those answers have not been, been made. Well, yet. what's the impact, Hanifa, on our children? Because in the final analysis, that is the bottom line. What's the impact? Well, it's not the final analysis. It's the only analysis. And the only analysis is that what are we doing about academic achievement with our children? What are we doing about safe neighborhoods, safe schools, and our neighborhoods being able to support Columbus Dispatch says we falsified our numbers. Falsified our numbers in terms of what? Academic achievement and said the school absences, they fixed, you know, they flipped it, they let people go, they did, they, 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 students that were performing, for, uh, performing poorly, they did things that would, you know, change the outcome. Well, of I'm the, amazed that the Columbus that, Dispatch is, that, is, is that your true? only, I'm amazed that the Columbus Dispatch is your only reference. What I'd like for you to do or for your research team to do is look at the graduation rate, look at each individual school and their academic performance. So you said they Look were and wrong. see if there was some progress. I'm saying that the Columbus Dispatch took the data that they have, and I'm hoping that they use data. They, took, they take the data that they have and they give it their spin. Okay, I'm taking the data that I have and I'm giving it, it, I'm giving it the spin. East High School, for example, they went from 78 graduates three years ago to last, to this year, they had 122 graduates. So I'm looking at that kind of progress. I'm looking at how we make impact, not only at each individual schools, but also in our feeder patterns. And our feeder patterns, just for the listening audience, happens to be the high school that our children are feeding into. That's from what I'm concerned school, about. Yes. From elementary school all the way through high school. That's what we need to be focusing on. But without a doubt, Kahari, there's more to Columbus City Schools than just academia. Okay. okay. As, as Mr. Cole said, that we have to look at levy. We have to look at why are we gotcha. asked to pass a levy, what's in it for our community, what's in it for our children. All right. We're just getting started. I want you to stay right there. Coming up next, the Mayor's Education Commission. Welcome back, Kari Free at Last. Joining us is Hanifa Kanban and Michael Cole, and we're talking about the ongoing situation with the Columbus Public School System. The mayor has said that he just wants to help. Now, he's come out and he's announced this Grand Education Commission, 25 members and all of the people. I don't know how many are from actual Columbus or how many have students in the Columbus Public School Districts. I think that needs to be researched or talked about. But now people are beginning to wonder, especially at the state level, when some legislation has been proposed about distress commissions and potentially the mayor stepping in, being allowed to do what they did in Cleveland to take over this. Is this a takeover of the Columbus Public School District by the I, mayor? I don't think it is, Kahari. When the mayor and I met in the fall, the mayor said, seems like there's some issues going on, Mrs. Campbell. And I said, there certainly are. He said, I'm going to bring you some help. I said, we welcome all the help we can get. We're trying to run a $1.5 billion industry, and so any help that you can bring us, we would welcome. And I said, but the help that you're speaking of, are you talking about jobs? Are you talking about housing? He said, all of that. And so that this was legislation the end of our conversation. just mysteriously so appeared, uh, giving him the, essentially the power to take, if, if, if at least that's the assumption, it would give him greater control and greater power over public education. Well, for clarity's sake, what, what House Bill 167 specifically that has now been passed in our state budget, what it has done is created a larger, more competitive playing field for charter schools to be able to be competitive with Columbus City Schools. Correct. And it created a unique environment that now gives voters, so you're not out of the game here, that gives mm -hmm. voters the opportunity to decide whether you want to put, on, put a levy on the ballot that allows the district to have its money split between the district and charter programs throughout the city schools district. So the issue here is that it's not a takeover of Columbus City Schools. So why is that perception out there? It is not. Well, the perception is out there, and that's why we're here, Mr. Cole and I are here, to make it clear, at least to identify some of the key points. 
It is not to take over the city schools, and that's why I think that the mayor, I'm going to take him at his word. I'm going to trust him at his word that that is not the intent. But as Mr. Cole said, the state legislature has now said that, hey, you all are going to have to make a decision, okay, charter or public. And the voters are going to have to make that decision. Absolutely. But the only way that they can make that decision, Kahari, is to stay diligent about their research, listen very carefully to the community groups that are out there that are saying that we're not going to spend all all this money the on charter is, schools and we haven't is, finished taking care of our own that, children. The problem is all of the stuff that's coming out in the community, people are hearing that the mayor wants to take the school system. They're also seeing that the school board seems to be laying low and, and it doesn't seem to be aggressive about taking charge and they're mired in a whole bunch of problems. So how do you deal with this? How, what is going to be your solution to address this My solution situation. as a person that's running for school board is to continue to stay the course, okay? If I feel that the mayor is trying to take over and I don't think that the citizens want that, I will fight against that. My and the mayor has made it very clear that he individually or collectively in terms of the city that they're not trying to take over. I'm going to work with the mayor. I'm going to work with the recommendations that came out of the commission, those that fit. I'm going to approach the board to see if we can implement those. Those that do not, I am going to be opposed. Mike, my aim is to make sure that we shape the narrative. So provided I am elected on November 5th, Michael Cole for Columbus City School Board, I hope to have the opportunity here to really use our power and leverage to shape the narrative around the direction that the district should be taking on its own. Why should period. I assume that either one of you going to do anything different? I mean, all I'm reading is what's happening in the paper. I'm hearing all this crazy stuff going on. Why should I, as a voter, assume that there's going to be a change, a, a constructive change for the children? If my I ten, can. My, my 10 second is that watch me. Watch me and look at my record. Watch me and look at my vote. Watch me and look how I walk. Going Don't forward, what am I, I going to see? Okay. What am I going to see? Oh, you're going to see. You're going to see that I'm going to come out and I'm going to continue to say academics is not the is not a multiple choice question. It is the only thing that we're focusing on for our children. Our children must graduate and go into higher institutions of learning, and they must be well prepared. That attendance. That has to stop. We have to look carefully at operations. Those things that went wrong, they must be corrected. And that's why I'm confident that the interim that we've selected, Kahari, and I'm sorry, Mr. Cole, I let you in, that interim that we've selected is going to get us on the right path. Michael Cole, why should I believe anything is going to be different because you're there? Because I want to make sure that we fight to change the overall culture mm -hmm. and way of thinking and behaving of our district. That not Something only wrong with the culture? Absolutely. What? Absolutely. The what? fact The fact that we were asleep at the wheel, the fact that leaders in our she district... She says that, you were, that, 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 leaders, she, that they were not asleep at the wheel. Leaders in our district were asleep at the wheel. Who? When it was time to make decisions about this attendance piece, when I tell it was time you what, to... I tell you what, we're going to have to stop it right there. We've got so much more to cover. Thank you. Be aware of what's going on. Stay on top of what's going on in the Columbus Public School District. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Kahari Free at Last. I'm Kahari and Carl. The fatal shooting of Trayvon Martin by George Zimmerman took place on the night of February 26, 2012, in Stanford, Florida. Zimmerman is currently on trial for second degree murder in the case. Now, Trayvon Martin was an unarmed 17 year old African American. George Zimmerman, a 28 year old multiracial Hispanic American, was the neighborhood watch coordinator for the gated community where Martin was temporarily staying where the shooting took place. Um, George Zimmerman's trial, uh, Earth Jallo, you went down there, Earth Jallo's joining us, you went down there, Reverend Coates, you're from, familiar with it. Earth Jallo, tell me about your feelings about this trial. Was Zimmerman an innocent victim? Uh, was he, uh, was Trayvon Martin the perpetuator? Was he trying to hurt the man? Was he trying to steal? Or was this straight up murder in your opinion? I believe it was straight up murder. I think it was, I think it was uh, intentional. When you are told not to follow someone and you get out of the car, now you're making up stories that, you know, the young man circled your car. It's just all kinds of inconsist inconsistencies. And um, I do believe that he should do some time for murdering an unarmed 
Who child. says it was in self-defense? I don't believe why, that. Wait a minute. Why not? Why, why don't you see? First of all, there's been a lot of falsehoods about it. NBC Absolutely. and other, they made up videos that were incorrect. A lot of incorrect information was flowing out. Uh, they suppressed the background of Trayvon and all of that kind of stuff. Why don't you believe George Zimmerman? Well, because today, for one, they said that Trayvon's uh, hands after the autopsy didn't have a lot of defensive wounds or on them. Zimmerman had so blood on him, according fine, to police but reports. It doesn't. It, if if you're beating someone within an inch of their life, then you should have some more cuts and bruises on your knuckles and on your hands than what Tray Traymon did, and he only had a, a, a little abrasion on his pinky. So I'm not inclined to believe that a 250 pound man who was supposedly taking martial arts courses three times a week could not get a little 17 year old 180 90 pound child off. You of believe him. Zimmerman? I believe that the whole issue of um, community policing needs to be addressed and what type of authority. Stand your ground? Well, stand, stand your ground it can be interpreted several ways. And I don't think that stand your ground uh, applies to Zimmerman because Zimmerman was functioning in a quasi law enforcement capacity. Okay, and by the way, I'm still trying to figure out what a multi-ethnic Hispanic is. Okay, <laughs> but and I, and, I, and, I, and I thank you for that one. I'm going to put it in my. What it means now. is that he wasn't white, right? <laughs> because when the first information came out, the first news was that it was a white man, and then all Al Sharpton got on and started hollering and screaming and bringing everybody down. Haven't we seen enough of this? Don't we see this over and over? Aren't you tired of but it? But unfortunately, we see it in our own communities over and over again. This is not a new story. Is this a license but, to kill young black men? Well, there's always been a license to kill. What? Young, there's always, in the, in the history of this country, there's always been a license to kill young black men. This isn't the first time that we've heard this story. This is the first time we've heard this story within a 24-hour news cycle. Was this political? Because it happened during President Obama's re-election campaign in 2012. And if, was and this designed to stir up some relationship between him and the black community, which many people say thus far he hadn't done much. So is this what this was all about? It became political because many interests in this country, including community activists, including the president of the United States who said that Trayvon Martin Could was like his, son, like his son, yeah, yeah. And, and including Florida legislators that decided to take advantage of the stand your ground issue. That was a time to argue that. Everybody um, jumped into the soup and, and, and made it their own politics. Absolutely. So why should I be concerned about what happens in Florida when I've got problems right now? We just had a, a situation in Columbus where in Clintonville, a police shot, fired a hundred shots, killing a black man and black woman in a car. Nobody hardly said a word. A Why am I so concerned about that? And there's a situation, that? situation in Cleveland, Ohio, Cleveland, a situation Ohio, yeah. in 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 New posh York. New Albany, Ohio, where a young man's walking to football practice and was had a gun pointed in his face by a New Albany police officer, and taken into custody. Well, you know, it's a gun issue, I believe. I believe we need to start finding out where the guns are coming from that are on the streets in our neighborhoods. What do you mean it's a gun issue? It's a gun issue. Wait a minute, the police fired 100 shots at somebody yeah. running away, I mean, in a car, the high-speed chase, even at, you know, with the fire department people, they were concerned about it. How is that a gun issue? No, he was asking the question about, it, we see this every day in our neighborhoods and in, in, in our own backyards, and my thing is, it's a gun issue. You said, how does this affect you? It affects you because from this Trayvon Martin thing came this gun control and mm -hmm. all this gun, this gun business with, you know, Know, the 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 killing in, uh, of the of the elementary school students so it's a gun issue for us where are all these unregistered guns coming from and getting into the hands of Zimmerman's gun was registered yeah not and him it, it, right but so yeah. I, I have I don't I'm, think I'm, it's I, a gun I, issue. I don't think it's a gun issue either I don't so, think so it's you a don't think issue. we have a, a issue in our own back neighborhood in our own neighborhoods of guns on our streets and and we and like you said black on black crime you don't the, the only issue I think we have with guns is that there's too many of us applying for concealed carry <laughs> and when we do so your name is being put on a list they know they, they're gonna come get your gun first NSA oh <laughs> 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 but as, as I look at this trial, many people are saying if Zimmerman gets off, there's going to be riots across the nation. Come on. Again, that is the setup. That, and I think that is one Do thing that... Do you believe that, that's going to happen? I believe that that's one thing that we are falling trap. Uh, it's a trap. And I don't think that that's what we should do. Do you believe we'll do um, it? 
I think that if we do it, we'll tear up our own neighborhoods just as we... John, do you it's a concern I have. And the reason why I have a concern is because thousands of African Americans throughout the country donned hoodies and iced tea and Skittles <laughs> as, a re as, yeah. a re as what they thought was an effective form of protest mm -hmm. to this um, young man's killing. What will be the final outcome? Real quick, got about 10 seconds. John, what will be the final outcome of this? Um, George Zimmerman will be um, acquitted. All right. What? Thank you. We'll be... <laughs> <laughs> he says, I don't think so. Well, well, if he is, then we're certain to have some yeah, rides. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. That's, that's yeah. not a good feeling. No, it's not. <laughs> All right. I want to thank Earth and John for joining us in this segment. Stay right there. More to come on Kahari Free at Last. Hi, welcome back. In a pair of major victories for the gay rights movement, the Supreme Court ruled that married same-sex couples were entitled to federal benefits and by declining to decide a case from California effectively allowed same-sex marriages there. The rulings leave in place laws banning same-sex marriages around the nation. Should same-sex marriage be allowed in the state of Ohio, John Coates? Absolutely not, and I'm so glad that we have a General Assembly, a, 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 a State House of Representatives and Senate, and a governor that believes in the sanctity of but marriage. But wait a minute. The President <laughs> of the United States has come out, Earth Jallo, and said that same-sex marriage should be allowed. Was, was that at the time where he needed votes? That he needed to, no, to grab the No, he went over in votes? Africa just recently. <laughs> I know, Next he was just Mandela, over there. Next to almost trying to see Mandela, but yeah. Yeah. Family, family, family snubbed him. Family, family, family snubbed yeah. him, yeah. so, but, you know. but he went over to Africa pushing same-sex or gay rights, so he believes in this. We, we can't even get regular marriage right between a man and a woman, how are we going to incorporate something else? We don't even have well, that Supreme foundation said, together. Supreme Court said it was okay. And mm -hmm. that's what we need to understand as voters, that these national elections, these presidential elections have consequences. So who you may have voted for 20 years ago um, may affect the Supreme Court ruling listen, John, because listen, presidents appoint listen, justice. Listen, the Supreme Court, the powerfulest court in the land, said that same-sex marriage is fine. What's wrong with you, and you Reverend John And Coates? you expected Elaine Hagan to, <laughs> to vote any different way? Well, she hasn't <laughs> declared her sexuality. <laughs> she hasn't, she, that's your assumption. I didn't, I didn't say, I said, did you expect her to? How is the African-American community uh, uh, responding to this same-sex ruling? The same way that it has responded wherever they have put this issue on the ballot. In North Carolina recently, where it was an issue, the African-American community rejected it, even though the NAACP and other so-called yes. civil rights organizations pushed for this, the African-American community I'm rejected I'm trying to totally. understand, how did the President of the United States, who's African-American, decide this issue had priority over yeah. civil rights, over poverty, over unemployment of black people? How did that you happen? Know, my thing is this, is it a war on the, on the black family? Is it a war on the black family? You, have, you don't have the male in the, ho male in the home already. You have all these single mothers raising these, these boys and these young women. And look at the state of our children. So I have to ask that question. I mean, is this targeted toward African-American families. you ask why did the president of the United States mm. back choose that as a priority? Because there is a powerful, active, vocal, financially contributing gay activist constituency of the president that, that and, and they do what the black community doesn't Speaking do. of which, now the Supreme Court also ruled against the civil rights. It gutted the Civil Rights Act of 1965. I haven't heard one gay organization come out and that I've heard up. of right. and stand up where black organizations come out and stand up for the issues. What effect will this ruling have on black voters in the black community? We don't know the, um, the effect, but we, we, we act like that voting discrimination only took place uh, uh, 40, 50, 60 years ago Pro. and not 16 years ago. We forget about 2004. <laughs> is that, is that yeah, where you have? Yeah, because there's still, there's still unanswered questions are we in relationship attention? to that. So now the, the law's gone, the restriction's gone. We, we have to see what, 
what happens next. Well, how come the reaction in the African-American community, uh, uh, Earth Jalla, was so feeble? That's what I'm saying. Are we even paying attention? Do we know what even what is even going on? We're so focused on this little stuff, Paula Dean and all these other little things that really don't oh, matter. Oh, Paula Dean, that you really had to matter. bring up Paula I'm Dean. I'm sorry. Oh. That do, don't matter. And, and all our voting rights are being tampered with right now, and I don't really think we're really paying attention. Are we going to get angry about anything? It seems to me that other communities went up and black communities are going down. Yeah. Is that correct or am That's I That's because of our own sleepiness. Is we have rocked ourselves to sleep. We accepted the symbolism of the blackness of the president. Symbols said, over substance. Uh, sim yeah. Symbols over oh, substance. Oh, and we God. said, well, all the work is done now. It's time for me to settle down and for relax. my long winter nap. Now, you said the president has accepted and pushing this gay marriage thing, but he has, he's married to a woman with two children. Hmm, go figure. Well, what does this open the door to? No, I mean, it, 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 if it, it, marriage it's a, gets confused, it's a, it's a slipper, anybody can it's marry a slippery, slippery slope. slope. <laughs> and, you know, is it, is it marriage to an animal next? Oh, geez. Yeah. yeah I mean, well, the, the door is open, and that's the problem. The problem is, but what should, in, in quickly, Reverend Coates, what should be the African-American community's response to both of these issues? It's to solidly raise concern about our Voting Rights Act, make sure we have procedures in place to make sure that the, the voting process remains fair and balanced. Also, as it relates to same-sex sex, sex marriage, outright reject it. Irv, quickly. I'm with him, absolutely. It says in the Bible, one gotcha. man and one woman. Gotcha. You believe in the Bible? Sometimes. <laughs> okay, Sometimes. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for Car Free at Last. We'll talk with you next week.